how do you describe something that has no objective qualities? Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> right. Right. It's not. And, um, and the, the natural tendency is going to be to attribute an objective quality, which is a veil or a superimposition on consciousness, back onto it, which then does limit it. And I think sure. that's what where we're trying to yeah. we're trying to make that very clear. Yeah, right now. that's yeah, that's why we always say most most of the questions that come up and that I see when people ask you questions have to do with things that they've attached back to consciousness. Right. We uh, and and that's why we say constantly. Number one, that it is awareness itself that is the one being aware. You know, we, we don't say this repeated because we like to hear ourselves talk, but it just seems like the conditioning is so strong the other way that we start with things that appear with the relative. We start with form, with that so-called realm, and then whatever the standards are within that realm, we try to apply them to awareness and say, well, it's true out here, so there's, that kind of thing also has to be true of awareness in some way. Why doesn't awareness meet the pattern uh, that's going on in the picture here? But it doesn't work that way at all. You, you can't. So, can, um, we, can we circle back around to something you touched uh, uh, on a second ago, which is that consciousness neither has boundaries of any sort, yeah. and in fact oh, yeah. is, is boundless. Yeah, yeah. Um, Again, let's deal with what's present right now, rather than this being, theor being theoretical. There's awareness here, and there also appears to be a room, and beyond the walls of the room, there, appear to be, there appears to be a greater world out there, and it appears to be an, you know, an endless universe of space. And if the assumption, the typical human assumption, is that awareness or consciousness with the little c is located in here. And if that's your premise, and that certainly, certainly seems to be the prevalent belief today, then naturally it's going to seem as if the rest of the world is out there and consciousness is bound inside here. But is it maybe... Good? There's an alternative right. to that, and if you just don't accept beliefs, accept what, you know, and even though some very authoritative types and with a lot of credentials seemingly will try to, will, will say to the contrary, just ask yourself, is this really the case? Right. And one thing that becomes instantly evident is that, well, wait a minute, if I'm starting as awareness, as a, not as a body that has an awareness inside it, but just as an awareness that's present here, it appears as if everything, that awareness is greater or not bound by anything. Because I appear to be able to say that I'm conscious of that window and that gorgeous scene outside there, and I also, and, and this body, and it appears like that's out beyond the body, but is it out beyond awareness? Right. No, because if it were, I wouldn't be able to be aware of it. And I can say that with the farthest reaches of the universe, even though uh, Pluto is you know, way beyond the eye's ability to see it, even if the body were to travel there, or, or you know, whatever I might want to try to imagine where it is, none of it ever, ever, ever is going to get outside or beyond awareness. There's right. nothing greater than awareness or consciousness, no matter what you say, it always is going to be a thing we appear to be aware of. And awareness has no boundaries that can be applied to it, as we were just yeah. saying earlier. The beauty so. of this is that it's very simple. It's very clear, it's very simple. If you just ask yourself, what is the limit of what I call my consciousness, can you find it? Yeah, yeah, can and really try. It? Really try, you know, so you, you satisfy yourself. You, Don't take my word for it or your Chris's right. word for it. You gotta do that. Right. 